Hey guys, the Nesmith Berg here. Hope you're doing well. So in today's video, we will be looking at scripting and the marketing scheduler just to make our lives a little bit easier when it comes to automating certain functions. Because I recently made some videos on containers and I realized containers are awesome, but there's one problem. If your marketing reboots or loses power for whatever reason and boots back on, those containers are offline or they're in a stopped status until you manually start the status again. So how can we make it so it automatically just starts these containers if a reboot occurs? Well, we can use the marketing scheduler with a script to do that, to just turn our containers automatically back on. So we don't need to manually do that every time we lose power or the device needs to be rebooted. And I'm also gonna show you another cool script where you can actually just automate backup configurations of your marketing to be sent to an FTP server so that you also just have that assurance that you have a backup file of your marketing that's recent in the event of some type of hardware or software failure that you can just restore from the backup at a later date. Anyways, let's get into the video. Alrighty, so what I've done now is I've actually rebooted a MicroTik that this Ubuntu VM is connected to for internet access and it is using Pi-hole to actually do the DNS resolution and such. Now, an issue for me is if I log on to the Microtech and we just look at its uptime quickly, I can see it's only up for two minutes. If I look at its terminal, and let's just zoom in here, and I do a container print, we can see that all of the containers are in a stopped state. So that's pretty bad for us because now none of these containers will actually be delivering any services. Like this first one, the Unify controller is down, and my Pi hole is down as well, so people can't actually do DNS resolution either. So I can just manually start the containers again by doing a container start, and then I can start zero, and I can start one. And if I do a print, we should see that the containers are running, and this should actually just restore internet access for us. So let me just open up a new window. And then with this new window, let's see, can I get out to the internet? I can say I can ping google.com, and can I actually browse? So let's just go on to Firefox, but let's see, can I go to like this article? So I can see I can get to articles. So my internet browsing is working, but I had to manually restart stuff to get this working. So that is not nice because this means if I'm the only administrator and I'm implementing this stuff at an office and I'm off sick or something and something happens and the device gets rebooted and they can't get a hold of you, you're gonna have some very angry staff or customers. So how do we fix this? Well, we can just run an automated script that will occur when the device starts up. And to do this, we can go into our system and scheduler. And the scheduler, I want you to think of this very similar as a cron tab on Linux, where you can schedule when certain things needs to happen. So here we will just schedule at a specific time to do something. So you can just click on the plus and it's very straightforward. You can give the scheduler a name. So I might just tell, call this uh, power containers and I can specify a start date. So when are you going to start doing this? And that is going to be today's date. But if I click on this drop down arrow, this is actually quite nice. You can see there is a start up option here as well. Now, what is start up? It's actually where the microtech can see it's been powered off and it's been powered back on. And after it's finished its boot sequence, I believe three seconds after the boot sequence has finished, it will run whatever script you put on start up. So that sounds perfect for what our issue is because we want to power on the containers after the device starts up again. So I can just set it to start up and the interval, I'll just leave that alone. I'm not gonna to touch anything. I'm just gonna say whenever the device starts up, run something. Now there's two ways we can go about scripting this. Either we can do this with one script or multiple scripts to start separate containers, but I'm just going to do this with one single script because this feels a lot better for me. So what we can do is type out the commands like you would if you were in the terminal, if you were in Winbox. So we will type container, forward slash, start, forward slash. And I know I have two line items, zero and one. And we can see that by going back to the terminal and just doing a container, print. And then you can see which line item is associated with which container. So I know zero is my Unify controller and one is my Pi-hole server. So what I can do is just say, I want container start zero. Sorry, I just needed to make a space there. So it starts space zero for the first event. And I can also do a container start one. Now this poses a little bit of an issue because it's going to think it needs to run both of these commands at the same time. 
and then only one of the containers is going to start. I'll quickly show that to you by just applying this. And let's just reboot this market again. So there's system reboot. Say yes. And this is again why I love Marketic. It's so quick for these devices to boot up. I'm just going to cancel here and we should see this neighbor coming up any second. Uh, let's just be in Winbox. Let's zoom in here. And if I look at my containers, so let's go into the terminal. Let's do a container print. I can see only one of the containers have started. So this is a bit silly for me because um, it's my own fault because we now basically told the Marketic to do the same action twice but it's only applied the last action that it saw there. So let's go back into our scheduler. Let's go into system scheduler. We can edit the script and then to make this just a single script, it's as easy as adding a delay function. Now what is delay? It's basically where you tell the marketing to wait a little bit before it issues the next line of command. So I will just delay this by maybe uh, three seconds and I'll apply and I'll hit okay. And now technically what will happen is it will start the first container, it will wait three seconds, and then it will start the second container. Let's quickly see if this happens by just doing another reboot again. So system reboot, yes. <laughs> so there we go, there's our Microtik. Let's just connect again, zoom in. And let's go to our system and scheduler. And what I like is you can see how many times the script has been actioned or run. And we can see the script did run so let's quickly check our terminal out now. If I do a container print, I can see both of my containers are running now. So now I've got both containers because I've got multiple containers running and they're able to just be started automatically by the system in the event of a reboot or power failure, which is very nice for me because now I don't need to worry about manually doing this whenever there's some issue. And maybe you weren't even aware of the containers that start in a stop state whenever you reboot the device, which is unfortunate because it might catch you off guard, especially if you started just using Pi-hole as your DNS server and you had to reboot and now suddenly you don't have internet access and you need to try and figure it out. This is probably going to be one of your main culprits. All right, so this is just a basic script on how to um, automatically or automate our containers being started up. Let's look at another useful script and that is where we can back up our configuration and just store it to an FTP server. Now I want to stress that this is a script that I found on the internet. I will put a link on the description or on the top pinned comment for where I found it. And what I like about this script that the person created, it's very straightforward. You just change three settings and the script handles the rest for you. You just need to make sure what your FTP server's hostname or IP addresses, the username and the password to log in, and the script does the rest. It will, in theory, just take a snapshot of your, your configuration file. It will also create a backup file and it will store both of those files on an FTP server so that you can later on retrieve those files if you ever need to recover from some hardware or software failure, which is very nice. Now you can store it on an FTP server or on a Microtik running the FTP service or any other device that's running FTP really, but just a keynote. So first thing I want to do is actually just get that script. So I'm going to make sure that we uh, log back on. Sorry, I can see the reason why it looks a bit different here is I'm back on my Windows machine actually. So let's just go back to our VM. And then on the VM, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to Microtik's web page, or actually I'm just going to search for it. We're, going, we're just going to do a Google search uh, Microtik FTP backup script. And I think it's this very first article published in April 1st of 2020. And you see this a couple of years ago, but the script is still very valid. Of course, with scripting, there's always newer and better ways to do things, but I feel like this script is very functional. It works just fine. And all that you need to do is you copy and paste this completely as it is into your Microtik. So we'll just copy this. I will go onto the Microtik, so go back to Microtainer, and what I'm going to do is I'll just zoom in. I'll go into my system scheduler. I'll create another scheduled script, and what I will call this is router-backups. Now we can set the start time again to today, which is fine. The start time is the first time it's going to action the script, and then the interval is how many times after it started running the script will it again do it. Now for our demonstration, let's say we maybe wanted to do this every day, so we could make this 24 hours, or you can make it like one day, zero, zero. That should be fine as well. So every 24 hours, it should take a configuration backup of this device. 
and then on event this is where we add the script again so i'll just paste this in here you don't need to worry about all of the stuff you can delete all of the comments if you want to you can add it into a text editor first and then remove all of the comments i'm just going to open up visual studio code even though i could just add this onto a text editor as well let's just create a new text file and let's paste the script in here there we go so if i scroll up we can see exactly what the author of the script intended obviously the pieces with these uh, sections are commented out we are setting some variables and it's basically just doing some things but it's nice that the author is explaining exactly what is happening in each step of this process but what is most important for us is at the top we have a variable to set the server username and password and that is all that we actually need to change now, as i said what you could do is to make this look a bit nicer on your micro tickets also maybe just edit out all of these comment sections so i'm just going to do that so it looks a bit more straightforward so that it when it's running in my market tick it doesn't uh, have all of these comments even though it's not going to break anything it's just there for usefulness and here you see there's even some commented out section where you can choose to delete the backup files if you want to if you don't want to keep them afterwards locally on your micro tick but i'll just remove this as well and now what we are left with is this basic configuration and we can just take out all of these empty lines and there we go so what we can do now is just copy the script as is go onto our microtech remove all of this stuff with the comments we can paste it in and i can scroll back up to the top and then all i need to do now is set some details so ftp server fqdn or ip keep the stuff keep the commas or the quote marks and then you can just put in some details so in my case my ftp server is my actual windows machine i've installed filezilla on it and i am going to use that as my server and that is 192.168.149.1 i can set an ftp server username so i've created a account on that ftp server called microtainer and then i just need to set the password for the ftp server and as an example for most of the labs that I do, it's TMB123, and I can just apply this. So now that I have the script, it should have actually run it, but let, let's just set the start time to something a bit more in the future. So what I'll do is look at my time, and let me set this for 2810. Apply it, and now we should see in a few seconds that it's going to run the script. So we're just waiting for that event. And we should see it did run the script, which is awesome. And it will also tell you when the script will be run at the next time, which is tomorrow, roughly the same time, which is awesome. Now, what has this actually done? Well, if I go into my files, we can see it's created two backup configurations. One is a backup file, and the other one is a script file with all of the configuration changes that we've made, which is awesome. And what I can do now is I can actually just navigate onto my Windows machine. So let's just do this. There we go. So here we can see I've got FileZilla running. I set up this FTP test folder. And if I go into this, we can see it has added this configuration on an FTP server. I can also just verify this by the FileZilla administration uh, console. And we can see that it did store some files here. It uploaded the configuration backups. So now we have that safety net in the event of some type of failure. What is nice as well as with that script, it is also labeling the date and the day, obviously, when the script was taken so that you know exactly what day that script is for. If it's for last week, if it's for yesterday, so that you don't import a very old script or backup file onto your microtech if you ever need to recover from some form of an error. All right, so these are two very basic script examples using the scheduler, but they can be very powerful because one, it's saving you time in the event of a failure to bring your containers back online, and two, it's giving you that extra form of just a safety net. If some type of error ever occurs and you need to do some error recovery where you need to re-import configurations onto a market tick, because now you've got those backups and it will automatically be storing those backups. You don't need to come and intervene every time and do this yourself, which is so nice. Anyways, I hope this has taught you something and that you see how useful the scheduler and the Microtech scripting can be. I'd actually like to create more videos on scripting because that is something that really sets Microtech apart from some of the other vendors. Um, not that there isn't like dev stuff with Cisco or Juniper, I, there's actually a lot more, but they've got these dedicated things where you're doing the programming from. 
Whereas with the Microtech, you're on your Microtech and you're doing the scripting or the coding from there and you're making it do whatever you want it to do. So that is really, really powerful. Anyways, I'm going to end off the video here. I'd like to thank my patrons and YouTube members for helping support the channel, especially the network pals and supporters. And you guys, the viewers, because obviously I love making the videos and the more you guys watch it and spread word about it, the more I feel like I'm helping other people to also just better understand networking concepts. So I thank you guys for watching the video. I'll catch you in the next video and I'll see you around. Bye.